Folds, transit, fold, transit, folds, transit, folds. Quiet, emission zone friendly vans are probably even more important than quiet, emission zone friendly cars because last time I checked, you and I are ordering more and more things online. And what does that mean? That means these things, vans, turn up outside our house and deliver stuff. In fact, pretty much everything you're seeing around you or the phone you're watching this on or the TV you're watching this on would have spent some time traveling in a lorry or a van. So surely more of those should be electric, right? In theory, correct. So in this episode, it's all about the EV, the electric van. More importantly, the best-selling van of all time, the Ford Transit, and this is the fully electric Ford E-Transit possibly the most important van that's going on sale this decade. I am going to be doing hopefully a real world review of the new Ford e-Transit where I'm going to be doing a road trip from my house to Doncaster to collect a thing, to take it to Luton, to deliver it, to go home. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to the Late Break Show. See, I've got a postman and my postman is keep saying to me, I really want to try more electric vans. Not this size van, but smaller vans, because he said all the journeys that postal service type vans do, and even couriers, there's so much stop start and there's so much idling time. And in an EV, if we hit traffic today, we're not really idling, are we? When it's stopped, it's not really using any power unless you're hosing the AC or the heating. It, it's really efficient because electric motors are you know, 100% efficient or nearly 100% compared to much less on a mechanical engine. One thing I would say, unladen vans and pickups tend to be a bit bouncy and a bit pogo-y. Um, and although this is a little bit like that in places, it rides better than a normal transit van. And the reason for that is because Ford have constructed the E-Transit to have completely different rear suspension. That electric motor is at the rear and it means it has independent rear suspension. No leaf springs, just coil springs, independent coils. And I actually think it makes a difference. So under here, there's loads of room. I guess the, the fuel tank would have been here on a normal diesel transit, but this was developed from scratch to be able to be EV and otherwise. There is your electric motor on this cradle, this aluminium cradle, which incorporates independent rear suspension with big fat coil springs. Normal transits have leaf spring back end, so this has independent. So theoretically, it's a better cornering vehicle, and like old school transits, all e transits are rear wheel drive. Nice. The e transit is only available in one battery pack size 68 kilowatt hours, whereas some other manufacturers have gone for a smaller, more city sized pack, a more long range Ford are going out. Maybe they'll in increase the size, but at the moment, it's a 68 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that will deliver between 166 miles WLTP, which is this one, the high roofed, longer one, or the smaller vans will get just under 200 miles WLTP. Um, however, you can buy you can buy the e Transit in two states of performance tune. So the lower motor, I think, is well, it says it here, 184 PS, whereas this one is the bigger power output, 269 PS. It's phenomenally powerful van. In fact, I think it's the quickest transit they make. It's got a serious amount of grunt, but also it's got a serious amount of load capability. I think over 1,750 kilograms. The gross vehicle mass varies between three and a half and 4.2 tons. But not only that, I think the cubic meterage in the back starts at about nine and goes all the way up to 15.1. So in other words, because this is an EV doesn't mean that you have to suffer with regards to cargo capability, because you don't. And there you can see the 68 usable kilowatt hour battery pack sits right here, doesn't impede in your, your cargo floor space or height, 400 volt system, and that there is fixed at the moment. There aren't other battery packs, it's just this size. But what's cool is you can choose your, your power output. You can either have a milder output, 134 kilowatts, I think, or a higher output, which is what this one is, 
uh, something like 269 PS. So a lot of power, a lot of power in the transit, but it doesn't interrupt what's going on in the cargo bay. Now, pricing, you're probably going, this is all fine, Johnny, and for a lot of businesses and people, this could probably work, but how much are we talking? Well, Ford is late to the EV uh, commercial vehicle game, really, but it's done that tactically so it can deliver a number of different van options, sizes, like I say, 25 combinations, various wheelbases and heights, but also priced aggressively. Let's talk excluding VAT, and the reason for that is because you mostly buy these vehicles and claim the VAT back. 48,600 quid priced from up to about 55, 58. But it's typically nine grand more than a piston, than a diesel transit. And 9,000 pounds seems a lot, but that's before you add the government grant. And the government grant on these currently, I think is 5,000 quid. So actually, it's about four and a half grand typically more spec for spec than the diesel equivalent. And then you have to factor in it's nearly half the price to service one of these compared to its diesel cousin, big deal. And it can go anywhere in Britain, any city, remember, because there's no emissions, because it's electric. So it starts to kind of stack up in those respects. And if you've got a depot and you can charge things slowly overnight with cheap tariffs, or if you've got a depot with a shed load of solar on the roof, of said depot, you can start to generate your own energy, your own fuel, and then we're talking about a seriously future-proofed business. Must wear steel-toed boots, not allowed on site without those, and a high-vis. Uh, and I did bring high-vis, which I stole from a job a few years ago from uh, a hill climb in America. Sorry, Pikes Peak, it was an amazing event. And I didn't do it on purpose, but I'm not giving it back. I'm not giving it back, it's a relic. So let's go and fetch an engine. Here it is. As I said before, there's a couple of different variants of the transit that you can option, uh, but the load floor is exactly the same. The body's the same because all the battery and the motor are underneath. So there's no different in height here. Uh, a load of this particular one, a load of well over um, 1,750 kilos. So a lot, but we're gonna put the engine in now. But this is what they look like bare, in case you've never seen the inside of a, a high roofed transit van of this particular wheelbase before. This is what it looks like. As standard, of course, um, one sliding door double back doors. I think you can option it with two sliding doors. There's like 25 variants of the e-transit available, which is more than any other electric van of this size. So anything from a chassis cab, double cab, you name it. I think this is my merchandise. And it's been pre-wrapped. So it feels extra special. Just my engine, it is, isn't it? Lovely. It says Civic Type R, let's see on the cellophane, so it must be right. So you're quite like doing real world reviews if I can. I don't review vans on the Lake Brake Show very often, but this is an important van. And I thought instead of just driving it aimlessly, I've actually got to do a big trip today. Kills two birds with one stone. So there we go, three days ago, that was a running, driving, salvage Civic Type R that was complete. Came in, it's been dismantled, thank you. Uh, I, I specifically wanted the complete engine with all the ancillaries, the complete gearbox, the drive shafts, and the linkage. And that's gonna go into my Austin Allegro Street Sleeper project, which if you're watching this transit van review, you're thinking, what on earth is it for? I'll put a link above to show you the introduction to that car. This has now got to go to Luton, so we're now in Doncaster, and that's our main journey for the day. And I am gonna give it a little tickle on a fast charger. I need a coffee and a toilet as well. Come in, come in. So, obviously got my high vis on me. Safety boots. This is one of the inner sanctums of, of Synetic. In the case of, 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 of what we've bought today, engine transmission, I, I didn't realize this, but um, the engines are actually documented um, running 
uh, filmed on the dashboard and they actually do a compression test as well. Um, so that always bodes very well. But there's whole cars. And there's racks of cars. This is the bit where these engines are at the end of their lives. They're going to be used as core. So basically bailed and weighed in. I've just noticed there's a K20 just there on the nice Subaru flat four there. And those cars on the racking back there, I think there's 1800 spaces. I believe those cars are waiting to ultimately be auctioned so they can go back on the road. So those are not beyond help. But everything behind me is all beyond redemption. This is all going to be uh, recycled for bits. And each car has its own ID plaque, like a, um, a barcode, and it sits on a racking with its own barcode. So in the yard at any point in time, everyone knows what car it is, where it came from, its VIN number, its situation, and where it's located in the yard. It's bloody amazing, honestly. It's really impressive, but I've got to go. I've got to get back on the road. Folds, transit, folds. Right, so we've loaded up the Honda Type R engine. It's in the back. Any rattles are either my drinks or said engine in the back. I set off this morning from home and got here and I've just done a hundred miles since uh, it was charged. And when it was fully charged at my house, it was registering 145 miles, okay? This particular car, um, WLTP, it's about 158, I think, something like that. But of course, it depends how fast you drive it. And I don't tend to do a really scientific experiment on range on the late brake show because everybody's different. The ambient temperature is different, the speed, the type of journey. But needless to say, like I said before, this particular type of journey today is the hardest type of journey for an EV. Sustained high speed, uh, where there's not a lot of regen braking going on. Um, and, and obviously trying to push the brick of a vehicle through the air. I'm now gonna pop off to a fast charger. The good thing about this is you don't necessarily have to fully charge each time. You can find a fast charger. The Transit will rapid charge it up to 115 kilowatts, which is actually quicker than any of the other van peers, quite a lot quicker. So if you can find a rapid charger that does that speed, happy days, 15 to 80% in 34 minutes. So I'm going to probably give it a half hour squiz or so. Uh, I need the toilet anyway. I need a coffee anyway. I'm right, yeah, I'm right at the end of my coffee. So I'm going to do that, and then we're then we're looting a hoy. I've really enjoyed it so far. It's quiet. It's familiar. So if you were a regular transit pilot, you wouldn't be blown away by. Uh, huge amounts of different technology or whatever. The main difference really is this screen, which has been borrowed out of the Mustang Mach-E, the, the electric SUV. So uh, it uses Sync 4, which is the modern infotainment system and uh, over-the-air updates, connectivity. It's pretty good actually. And as always, Ford stuff like Bluetooth hands-free always connects rapidly without you having to scratch your head too much. The only thing I would say is stuff like the temperature, heated seat function is, is, is all in a slide touch screen, which I find a little bit annoying. I'd want there to be a physical button for that, but other than that, clocks are really easy to decipher. Um, and you've still got, and I love this, you've still got your electric mirror adjustment knob, which is from 1985. I'm pretty sure that was first seen on a Mark III Ford Granada, and it's still used today. Love it. The thing is, now I'm about to join the motorway and on these lower, um, lower speed roads, you get a lot more regen back if you press the L button, which is a bit misleading. I don't know why it's called L, but it's, it, it's a higher amount of regenerative braking, which obviously harvests energy from, the, from braking it back into the battery pack. And it almost feels like a one pedal driving experience, which is familiar to me because I drive EVs a lot. But if you don't, you probably want to keep it without the L on and you get a bit of regen, which this left-hand needle swinging to and fro shows you. When you're in the green, you're putting energy back into the bats. When you've got a van, people abuse it. They either always want to borrow it or they write naughty things on it or they stick stickers on it. Someone's gone and stuck stickers on mine. 
I mean, they bought them from a reputable source, merch shop, no break show. That's where this recycled, British made travel cup has come from. Right now, like a lot of um, EVs, the Ford sat nav will always tell you where the nearest EVs are, whether your journey needs it. I've decided to not wait till it's too low because I've found, I'll pay for it first. I found a 120 kilowatt rapid charger and this will for rapid charger up to 115 kilowatts, which is actually really high for a van compared to its peers. So I'm gonna give it a squirt on that. And I do tend to quite like Instavolt. And what I would say, look at the thickness of the hose on that. That's because this is probably liquid cooled because it's such a high, high rapid uh, kilowatt output. But normally these charge points are at the end of the car parking space, which means a nose charge, you just go straight up to it, happy days. I seem to have found, I've never seen this before, I seem to have found one that's at this angle, which is a bit odd, but anyway. It's in the nose on a transit like that. Yeah, and the only way you can tell it's an electric transit is there's a bit of blue detail on the grill. Obviously there's this blanking panel here. Uh, and on the back, it just has an E in front of the transit. And that's pretty much it on the outside. So while I'm sitting, um, enjoying me Capri Sun um, at this rapid charge stop, rapid charging normally makes sense up to 80%. Beyond that, it slows right down so the battery gets preserved and doesn't create too much heat. But of course you can charge to 100% if you've got time. And it's telling me how long until, yeah, uh, it's 12.28 now, at 12.55 it'll be 80% charged. Happy days. 15% to 80%, 34 minutes um, at 115 kilowatts. Eight hours if you're using the transits on board, and I think it's 11.3 kilowatt AC charging system. A home wall box, I think it's 11 hours. Um, overnight charge. What's really cool, I was looking at this, is Ford have got this Pro app series, which is kind of like a, an app for transit van fleet owners and, and, and drivers. Allows you to do things like preheat remotely, allows you to do, um, to, to, to plot your navigation, but it also allows you to kind of check the efficiency of your van, uh, remotely unlock it if you want to. Um, and it encourages, what, what Ford are trying to do is they're trying to say, depending on what sort of a, a fleet owner you are, some of your vans should still be diesel. Some of your vans might benefit from being EV because of the journeys they do, the patterns of the journeys they do. The journey I'm doing today is probably better suited to a diesel most of the time. Um, but Ford's research says most van owners typically do 69 miles a day. And this will comfortably do that. In fact, Ford used that as the benchmark to say we want to double that fully laden. That should be the entry level capability of the e-transit. And I believe them. I've done a hundred, I've just written it down. Pulling into charge here. I've done 109 miles since I left home. All right. I left home with 145 miles on the, on the range, 100% charge. And it, I had 48 miles left when I've just plugged it in. And today it's what, 20 degrees, it's quite warm and I've been driving at about 65 on the motorway, something like that, so that's believable. Actually done a bit more than I was intending, 93%. Now, <clears throat> Ford, if you're a fleet buyer and you get involved with Ford, Ford will actually supply an RFID card. So if I am a van driver employed by a company, I can do all of this with essentially the same as a fuel card. I don't pay for it out of my own pocket, but even more interesting like that, the Ford Pro app allows you to charge that car at home, so with my home charger, but it knows that that van is charging and the app will immediately send an itemized bill to the company that I work for. So it, again, it just makes the charging process easier. That's assuming you take your van home. Yes, I'd like to stop my session. 140 miles of range at 93%, um, on the road to Luton, I was going to say it is, it is obviously quiet because it's electric and there are a couple of key differences on the e-transit to a normal transit, um, but not on the face of it. You go to, to uh, change gear, it's a rotary dial rather than a normal gear knob. There's a, an electric handbrake down here. You've still got really familiar swing needles on the instrument panel, which I like, 
regen and power usage on the left dial, speed on the right, and then in the middle you've actually got a swing needle for your fuel usage, for your state of charge, and then a little digital readout if you want it. And then there's a digital bit at the top there which you can, some of the information from here gets transferred over. And this is always, the Ford Sync system is always there to try and help you. And, uh, and, and also, uh, just because we want to try and keep the camera equipment cool, we've stuck the air conditioning on low and it hasn't even used one mile of range, which is a surprise. Ordinarily, it would use quite a lot of power from the EV, but it hasn't. That's good. Although I can't find out how efficient I've been. I've just got a trip. I haven't got a miles per kilowatt hour readout, or I can't seem to find one. Anyway. Pleasant familiarity. I might have said this already. It's really important with stuff like pool vehicles and, and, and encouraging people out of piston vehicles and considering electric vans. The transit really is the same as a normal transit, it just feels like an automatic transit. Steering wheel, seat position, three abreast, all really familiar. This being the higher roof one, loads of cubby holes. Got me emergency twiglets up there, no problem. Got me obligatory tr trucker Yorkie up there, just in case I get hangry. But in all seriousness, this stuff is all decent. Loads of cubby space along the dash. Big flask holster down there and down there and cup holder here, an abundance, an abundance of stuff. And US, at least one USB, might be two. Oh, there's another cup holder, I forgot about that one. Yeah, another one there. Some good stuff. All right, all right, all right. Right, needs must. We could actually get there without recharging, but we'd get there with almost no power to spare. And I don't want to do that. Um, so for the sake of a 10 minute little uh, tickle on a rapid charger, pulling in here, at, uh, the, the, the nav has shown me where to go. As I said before, if I had a Ford RFID card or something like that, I could just be charged through whatever business I work for. Anyway, he needs a poo, Matty the cameraman, and I need a coffee, and it needs a 10 minute tickle on the rapid charger. So that's what we're gonna do. Now you could say Ford are a bit late to the EV van game, but I think they've held out in order to do something a little bit more impressive in terms of range and also affordability. Because, you know, Nissan have had little vans out for ages. Um, Renault have had vans out for a little while and the Stellantis group, so Citroen and Peugeot have got stuff out. I'm just thinking the, the Peugeot e-box is the nearest rival to this and the Citroen e-relay which share platforms. That thing has a 37 kilowatt hour or a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack will do up to 154 miles WLTP and has three body styles, 11.5 to 17 meter cubed options. So that is relatively speaking similar to this. But the Mercedes e-Sprinter, I think it does like 84 miles. Not really competitive at all and heavily priced. Just not, not worth it, I don't think. Maxus have, um, have a possibility. Maxus E-Deliver 9, I haven't driven it. It's supposed to be pretty capable. Um, and the Stellantis cars have got 22 kilowatt onboard chargers, which is a useful feature. This has 11.3 uh, onboard uh, system, AC chargeability. What about the VW ID Buzz? Well, the ID Buzz is a smaller vehicle, much smaller vehicle, akin to the, the Transit Custom. Uh, I have actually driven a VW ID Cargo, a Buzz ID Cargo. If you haven't watched that review, I'll put it above my head right this minute. Yeah. I don't like these dangling little bungs. I much prefer a, an actual hinged bung. Well, that's just me. This is waterproof, this door. I don't mind a nose charger. Some people don't like them. Anyway, onward. A couple of dislikes on the e-transit. This touchscreen, it's not quite as big as the one in the, um, uh, the, the Mac E, which is gigantic and it's more portrait from memory with that kind of stuck on volume control. This has a physical volume knob, but here's the thing. It's the angle it sticks off the dash. It seems to favor the person sat in the middle. 
I'd rather it was slightly angling the driver because most of the time van drivers are solitary people. I'd like it a little bit more angle because I can't move this. I'd probably like a couple more physical functions like the climate control and stuff to live here rather than within here. Success, we're here. We're at Dream Automotive where it's the, a, a great world of civic tuning. It doesn't normally touch engines as old as mine, but for me, he's making a special exception. Phil, nice to see good you. to see you, sorry I'm a bit late. That's all right. <laughs> um, I've got, a, I've got an, an engine, a transmission, everything. Okay. Complete drivetrain, basically. Let's take a look. You. I know, yeah. it's probably a bit old for you, isn't it? Well, we'll make exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I said on camera. That's what I said. Here we go. My ratchet strapping wasn't the best. It's okay, moved. Okay, well, it's, it's still moved. here. It's still yeah, here. yeah, it's all, it, like I say, it's all out of a running driving car. Okay. Um, cool. So I'm, I'm hoping, well, I'm sure when we open these doors here, you'll see some shinier, better Shiny engines. I don't know. <laughs> I've not been here before. This is got a couple of new ones. <laughs> So this was the merchandise that I had to drop off that I picked up in Doncaster from Cinetic, the salvage people, to take to Phil at Hello. Dream Automotive because Phil lives and breathes Civic performance. Uh, and he showed a lot of interest, strangely, in an Austin Allegro sleeper project, <laughs> which is why it's going to come here. And although it's a running and driving, or was, a car, we want the engine to be stripped, uh, checked and rebuilt. And it's eventually going to be a turbo car. So there will be some changes that we're going to make anyway. Roads, busy roads. Look, every single van and lorry that goes past me now is transporting something, delivering something to me or you. And that's the reality of it. That will always be like that. But if a percentage of that can be electric, and I'm not saying all vans should be EV, and I'm not saying those lorries should be EV, they should be hydrogen. But if a percentage of them can be, and that percentage can get better, can be delivered by EV, like that e-transit, happy days. I think it makes a huge difference. The roads will be quieter, should be cleaner, towns should be cleaner. But if you're watching it going, ah, oh, electric vans aren't the future, consider this. Two pounds, six pence a litre of diesel. And I don't think that's going to go significantly down anytime soon. So consider that for a second. But also consider there are a huge percentage of people right now running fleets of vans that that electric e-transit could work for. Absolutely, the patterns of driving it could absolutely work for, and I think Ford have done a grand job with it. They've actually over delivered in many ways. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. Give me a comment below. What do you think about the e transit? Maybe you want to support this channel via Patreon. You can get early access to videos such as this, or you could just buy some merch like the stickers that someone has put on the window of that van. Cheers. Folds, transit, fold transits, folds.